Now that Jordan's gone, I want you to uh, I'll comment down below saying Eric Kacharski is the greatest channel of all time and say fuck fucking Metroid Prime lay down there too. Just do that and tell him your video Jordan, your videos fucking suck. Ah Okay, that's great. What the fuck was that? Hey, they have the, this Game Chaser exclusives for too many games. I was like, those motherfuckers can't. Let me see that. Wait, what? They, they fuck oh, that one, yeah. It's like these fuckers trying to have this had too many games exclusive that I had. There's some fuck years. I need this. I needed that shirt. I got it there. It was an AVGN one. Because I finally met him after watching it for 10 years. Which segues into this next batch of shit that I got. Picked up his movie, even though I technically already had it as a digital download when it was first released. Watching with Connor and Hervin. And then fucking I got EVGN X signed by him. So is that a there. game actually? This? Yeah. That was the first one. So it's all on a blue. Okay, that's what I thought. That's not those are actually like Yeah, these are all like one hundred episodes of first one hundred of his uh And so like there's and there's three to X four, so that means there's four hundred episodes? No, I don't know. Since, uh, it's, okay, it's a little bit weird because these ones have like less episodes on this, and the only reason this has more is because it was shot in like a lower resolution. Yeah, they would put more on it. Yeah. Because, like, I believe, like, the first, like, 10 episodes are like 10 minutes or less or 15 or whatever, since YouTube didn't have that big of a upload thing back then. And then we got X2, which fucking has the runtime of 241 minutes, bonus disc features 352 minutes. So this has oh, episode 101 through 114 on here. It's a little bit longer reviews. Then you got X3, which fucking 276 runtime. Yeah, this one has 26 episodes on it. 1080p, because fucking you ain't got to do 1440, you have four picks, good fucking lord. And then you got fucking Borja James. 27 episodes, which I believe that's, yeah, all 27 episodes. Couldn't, couldn't remember if that was all that or not, but yeah, 24. Let me fucking say that wrong. Yeah, 27, Jesus fuck. 27 episodes of all that on there. And then, fucking last but not least, throw that little bastard go. I had, I could have sworn I had this, like, when I, in my house somewhere, couldn't find it. So I bought it, bought it on eBay for, like, a cheap price. Because I wanted him to sign it, because it was the first review I'd seen of his, a long, fucking 10 years ago. Like, like summer 2008, or no, that was, like, like, right before the start of summer 2008, when I found out he actually... Well, no, oh, fuck. I'm trying to remember this correctly, because it was, like, during spring, like, a little bit before spring, going into summer, because fucking I only watched what was on his YouTube, then didn't realize he was releasing new episodes until summer of that year, when fucking Batman Part 1 was brand new in 2008. His review of that stuff. But, yeah, that's all that. So that's fucking... Nice. But yeah, that's yeah, that was it for the fucking James Rolf stuff. I like, got to meet him. He's there only for Saturday, which well, that's fucking great. I don't know, I'll grab this. I finally picked this up for Connor. Said I would give him it. Said it I promised I would find it. And I did. It's fucking I find of course fucking the one he's not here I find Xeno Gears for oh, of course. 40. Which I'm pretty sure I got that for less because we bundled the shit together. But yeah, 40. I'm gonna leave that for Jordan. I love Connor. Yeah, I'll probably give this to Connor too because I know how much he likes his Chun Li. His thighs. Or her thighs. So, fucking. Check out of here. It's that, and then fucking. I'm trying to go through all the day one. Well, fuck it. This is like pretty much the last thing I got for day two. It was that Billy's fucking table where he was like, hey, I saw his shirts and. DVDs and a Blu-ray for seasons one through four. I was looking at these and I was pondering. I was like, I don't know which one to get. I was looking over and he's like telling me a little bit about one of these and he's like, Yeah, I paid for this for ten and that for ten. I'm like, so twenty for both of them. And he's in there. He's like, You know, just for you, I'm gonna give it to you for free. I was like, No. So I slipped him a ten. Told him to keep it. I potentially could have got these two games for free, which I'm like, Oh, that just feels bad. They get stuff from me like that, Billy. So yeah, you, you're not taking stuff from though. You give him shit tons of money. Not really shit tons. You're going to be true. Nah, that, but that's for a movie. Uh, I ain't saying anything stuff. more about that because I don't know much. But fuck, you're gonna be giving him plenty of money. It's fucking movie. Way too much. They'll make an announcement and try to like get them 
basketball rolling, because they usually smash the things for the Blu-rays, but fucking this is a movie, this is a much bigger thing, so... We'll just see how that goes. So yeah. Also, there is a Game Changer movie. The script's done. That's all I'll say. That's all I know about it. That unit that you think I know. Okay, so, and then fucking... Let's look at this some of this shit. Going on. Okay, uh, I saw these, both of these at the same table. I don't know if, like, because there was, like, several import tables. And I was just like, okay. Then I fucked, so I just picked up fucking Mario Party 1 and 2 Japanese versions, because fucking already had three Japanese, so I was like, eh. And you already have two Japanese. Just a cart, though. Is that the empty box or that complete? Oh, it's in there. Here, complete box, because 20 bucks complete box Japanese. Okay. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. I was like, well, I already got three bowling box. Well, shit. Can oh. I take your loose cartridge? Mario Party 2 Japanese? I mean, it can, it can play. It does have that in North American side. Or back side. Yeah. Or I can just, like, yeah. What do you call it? Get whatever one and replace the back. With an American one. Yeah, I'll check it out. So, there's that. Speaking of Mario Parties, fucking, I got. I also got. Instruction booklets for three and two. So all I need is just a North American box for three, and I have a complete thing of that. Because I really like instruction booklets because it's so vast and colorful. Just so exciting to look through. I love these. Same with the Mario Party 2. Just fucking pretty, colorful, and just tells you so much and just gives life to the boards. Characters and all that, all that good stuff. And then, fuck with that other instruction booklet though, because I know I got another one. It's gonna be bitch and hide for me. Ah, it's, it's around here somewhere. I also got a WWF No Mercy instruction booklet, guys. Okay, that just means I need the goddamn case for this, and a uh, complete box of WWF No Mercy, which is one of the best wrestling games of all time. Not only on the system, but of all time, so... Where's that? That shit is done. Oh, well. But, that's not all of my Japanese stuff. I also hit, uh, decided to get more stuff, so I got four, five, six, seven. I saw those first too, didn't I? They were cool as fucking shit. Yeah, they're like, they're all your game games and this is the size I of the I was expecting them to be like 50 bucks a piece, to be honest. I don't know how much they go for, but... I think I got all these for like 100. 90. 90. That's right. Yeah, that was a badass. So yeah, this is the size, this is the Japanese things, fucking... We really like, like, how they just have a like, small size to actually fit, not like giant cases like those. It actually gives it more of a unique look. Plus the cases are different. And the fucking discs. Like this one has like more of like a little sparkly little thing to it. It's fucking Yeah, they all have nice. different aesthetics. Yeah, like that four was pink. This one's like a light bluish with like a bullet bill running running around it. And then six. Fucking that's the kind of six. Yeah, it's, six has like the orange and blue with the Sun and moon on different sides. Uh, let's see if, how they can make seven interesting. I like it. I like a little bit of like the world, I like the way out the seven is. Some little cruise. So yeah, I got. I officially own all the Japanese Mario Parties for N64 and GameCube. Complete box. Heck yeah, buddy! I never think that was something I would be. Never think that would be something I would do, but fucking right there. Fucking love me Mario Party. So basically, I just need to get the Wii U ones, the Japanese, and be like, yeah, you go, I found them. Which speaking of Mario Party, I'm working on a Mario Party Five playthrough Fuck. with Patrick and Vinny. Fuck that play. Time for that should be up in a relative short space. Sucks balls. No, it doesn't. It's pretty good. 
You only lost Speaking once so far. Mario we Party, played four boards. I have Mario Party 1 sealed. You know, fucking looking very sealed? nice. Sealed? Well, no, not sealed. Oh, yeah, but okay. I'll go say. Hello. Case. But I, I actually have my original Mario Party 1 cartridge still from when I was a kid somehow. And it's still has a little beat up there, but it's in a nice protector. That's why I said, yeah, exactly. Like, okay, everything's in there. Structure booklet and all. Nice. Nice deed. Very big Mario Party stuff. So I just be like, yeah, throw that on the shelf. Looks good. This would be my display copy since I already have one loose that I can just play whenever. I don't know why I just thought of this real quick, but when Rich was talking to us about his sales and stuff, he had that new limited edition uh, PS4 that came out recently. One that's like only sold 5,000 of it. Yeah, that Millennial one or whatever. He had one of those brand new. Um, he sold it for 800 bucks right off the bat in the morning. I don't know if it was like right off the bat. It was like what? Did, yeah, he said oh, it was in the morning sometime. I thought like it, it wasn't. It wasn't too late. When we got there, it was like sitting up there, and I just looked at it. and I was like, damn, that's that's why yeah. I think it is. And Rich like, yeah, it was like. But yeah, he sold that motherfucker for 800 bucks, no hassle, no anything, just 800. All right, deal. The guy's like, I need that. So it's Rich like, yes, you do. I just figured I'd mention that these people, these. The people at these conventions make out pretty fucking good in most cases, because they, they do shit The smart. vendors and the consumers. Exactly. Even so, like, an Infinity Gauntlet for, like, a hundred something. Yeah, like, the thing, everyone comes out fucking happy here. Rich said he was blowing out the big guns for this one, throwing out the best of the best, and... Well, yeah, that's a smart team. fucking move. He, would, he could have been just fine just selling the PlayStation that, but he, so, he probably made, like, over two grand, if not more, just in those two days alone. Yeah, it's a, you can see a lot of expensive stuff like I like we saw this box Samson for thirty one hundred dollars. Beck and I Shit. this bank and this boxed Panic restaurant for like thirteen or fifteen hundred. <laughs> yeah, they were like I didn't even see those. those I'm nice. glad I didn't. Those were like it was like behind the glass case. Like it was like in the front, like where you enter. It's like you know, that table there, or like the one right next to it. But it's like behind glass stuff. Just to show, it just shows like how fucking expensive some of that stuff can be. I'm pretty sure they didn't tell this fucking Lord who got that money. They'd be stupid if I could pay that much right then. They're like, why would you pay that? And then again, people are people. <laughs> if you're gonna spend eight hundred dollars on a PS4, you'll spend fifteen hundred on a fucking NES game. Still, I still think Jay got that for ten dollars, like five dollars at a flea market. Yeah, but also purchase. back then it was only worth three hundred or so. No. Well, he got it. Like, it wasn't worth shit. I mean, it was. It was worth It was, was worth a lot, shit. but it wasn't worth, you know, no $1,500 by the fucking dollars like it is now. And technically, he got the box free because they trade bag with fucking stupid Grimsley. Yeah. Anyways, enough, of that. enough rambling. Um, fucking rush inside. Another N64 box. Complete box game I got was, uh, oh, was yeah. 2000. Not only do I like N64, I fucking like uh, wrestling games. This is uh, a little beat up on the side here, but fucking, you can just like display it like that or like that and just hide this side. It looks really nice. I fucking enjoy it. I'll just try getting like the box sets to score games that I like and then maybe continue on from there. But yeah, it looks beautiful. I was happy with it. And then, I never had this game, like ever. Mario Kart DS. It's just, it's just the case and like, then fucking cartridge, but it's like, like it says here, it's only three bucks. I can just get the book later online for somewhere else data, but it's only three bucks. I was like, okay. And then this I picked up from, uh, actually I'll save that for later. Um, I ended up did getting this, the Adapter Wonder, which if you don't know, you can play your Japanese at 64 games on your North American cart, on your North American N64, cause fucking I'll sh demonstrate after these first few things actually. So I've been needing like a, like a, I have a, my first N64 that I bought for myself was like a dark gray purple one, but it has like this light purple one that's like a see-through that's for the controller. But at the convention, I actually picked this bad boy up because I was like, yes, I need this controller, but. Giving it to him to fix the control stick on it because it's kind of. I'm gonna replace it. Well, actually, let me feel. Maybe I can clean it up and not have to. Actually... Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of. That's uh, pretty yeah. fucking bad. Jesus, how much do you say you pay? Like 
120 or so. Now if you paid 120, you well overpaid, but yeah. I need yeah, that that's controller. fucking, oh yeah. But fuck, damn. That is a bad one. I mean, I could replace it with a GameCube style that doesn't do that anyways. Mm. Yeah, I don't care. I just fucking need, like, something, because it'd be nice to have. There is a way to restore those to some extent, that but, like... That pain in the ass, isn't it? I've tried, and I've never been successful. If you get a good one early on, you can prevent that from happening by taking it apart. Because the reason it happens is it's just plastic on plastic all inside of there, and it just grinds to shit over years. And... If you go and lubricate it, like with proper lubricant, it won't grind down, you know. Use actual cup grease or lifting grease or something. I could also, yeah, we could probably try, for, like, I was about to say, keep an eye out for a very cheap goods. I just already. The controller at the stick. Yeah, there you go. Just Frankenstein it together. Well, they're all worth, like, fucking 20 bucks in most cases. I saw a whole bunch more there for 25 so. Yeah. It's, that's the only problem is it's kind of hard to find an N64 controller with a good stick. Then fuck yeah. I don't even know where half the stuff came from because I'm pretty sure I got the... You know, you're going to remember like half these vendors, but for PSP, I don't care what Beck says, I got the World Combat Unchained. I don't care if it's the greatest hits or not, but it's pretty <laughs> much basically Deception Mobile on the go. It adds more characters because I know it adds Jax. Jacks. Fuck, he's like. Yeah, the metal arms. Yeah, like that's. Yeah, he strangles you. Yeah, basically. And this fucking has. I want to say Kung Lao. Plus, it also throws in Shao Kahn and Goro, which were only a Nintendo GameCube exclusive for whatever reason, I don't know. But it's just basically Mortal Kombat Deception on the go, which is one of my favorite Mortal Kombat games. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's the additional one. It says Jax, Frost, Blaze, Katana, Goro, Chalkon. So that's those four extra characters if you didn't have the GameCube version like I do. So once I've been in the franchise, and Frost, I believe that's her second appearance since her first one's in Deadly Alliance. And fuck you. Yeah, Blaze, that was the second appearance as well because he was in Deadly Alliance, like I previously said. And then another game I picked up was Legend of the Heroes 2, Prophecies, Prophecy of the Moonlight Witch. <clears throat> Not just a thing, but just a UMD, but I can I just find the manual if I really wanted to, or online somewhere. And then another game that I got for the PlayStation 3 was Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma for uh, PlayStation 3. Yeah, it's all in there. Nice. Please, blue! Because I like anime. It looks fun. Fun anime game. And then, other PlayStation 3 games I got was uh, Naughty Bear, because you beat the shit out of bears. Just kill them, channel them. That's right, TPT. What the fuck is that bullshit? Twitter. Fuck Twitter. And then I got Dead. No, no not that one. I got Escape Dead Island. The exclusive inside cream game Dead Island game there, which fucking I called out guarantees already expired. But let's just see when did it expire. It was valid. It was valid until November 18th of 2014. So you're a little bit late on that. But I don't know. It was like cheap, like fucking five bucks. That's like, well, I don't have it, so I'll go get it. And Didrick should be happy about this one. <laughs> So fuck. you did pick it up. Fuck you, Didrick. Got Deadly Premonition, the director's cut. Oh, but you got to get the PC port and try to get it to run. That's the most fun part of the game. Yeah, got trying to get the goddamn PC port to run. Cause, he, cause like he's like, yeah, I play, I seen all the gameplay of the other ones, and he can pick out a problem with every single one, like every single version. PC runs like <laughs> fucking shit, no matter how good your computer is, cause apparently the emulation is just fucking weird, or trying to run it on Steam, I think it was. Pretty sure it was like Xbox has like one of the worst fucking graphic, like yeah. one of the worst like drivings or whatever. This or even this one like had like the worst slowdown time. I don't fucking know. Uh, I picked up because uh, Dietrich's bitch. Then fucking that's it for PlayStation Three games. And then for Wii, I picked up Pandora's Tower, made by Xseed. What it looks like, it looks like a weird little fun. 
RPG thing in there. Things looking good. And then I also picked the bow oh, shit. Specs. What is it? Specs. Whoops. Well, back. Oh my god, Wii Sports Resort. If I can look through his legs, be what the fuck's my Wii Sports Resort? It's like it's right here. Yeah. <laughs> so I got this. Got it for like no, he got it for like ten or so. That's mine for sure. I picked up a uh, Sabadi Amigo. Sabadi Amigo. It was originally on fucking Dreamcast, and it came like a little set of maracas you plug in and play the game with. But yeah, Sabadi Amigo. It's a good game out here. And then, uh, fuck it, I just had picked it up. It's an NBA Jam for the Nintendo Wii. This is kind of a little fucking weird. It has like paper on that, but for sure we can just that's some of these times. Yeah. But yeah, it's NBA Jam. It's fucking a good game. It's been revitalized quite a bit. I fucking like it. Because I think, I don't remember, but yeah, I think PBG's a little catchphrase that, that he's entering a contest, and one of his phrases got picked to put it in the game. I don't remember what the fuck it was. But yeah, that was cool. And then I found, and then, I wish I had the original one, but I got for the Wii, I got Klonoa. Which is very expensive, which is kind of pricey to get on the PS1, but eh, second like next best thing would be the Wii, I guess. I don't know how it runs or plays, but if I can just Klonoa, I heard it's a pretty good game. Pretty good, solid side scroller. And then fucking. Then, at fucking Scott's table, I picked up uh, Breath, of the F Breath of Fire for the Super Nintendo. This fucking Breath of the Fire. Breath of Fire is a good RPG series from right here. We're gonna pick, oh yeah, I picked up some of those. Pretty sure I picked up some now from Scott, I don't fucking remember. So now I just didn't just get that. Pretty sure I got like one of those. Pretty sure I got the boxed Mario Party. That's some other shit, I don't fucking remember. Yeah, got that. And fucking now. From Rich's table. I got fucking. Oh, shit, I forgot. All this shit that's why the riches. <laughs> then for the riches table, I picked up a Twisted Metal Black. Maybe the greatest hits disc, but it includes a black Twisted Metal Black online disc. Now there's the game itself right there. And then there's the online disc. I don't care if it's uh greatest hits or not, I'm not picky like Beck is. I just like having it. But you can tell it's rich because fucking has that orange sticker on there and a cheap price for it. The next one I got, next I got from there was Samurai Warriors 2 Empires. Oh, there. Okay. I should... <laughs> Oops. It doesn't come with the game, but it came for the case and the thing, and it looks nice, so I'm probably going to have to go look that up. Like this for it only. I don't it shouldn't be too expensive. I think this, I got NARC, which looks like a weird police fuck, like police shooting game. I don't know, it looks interesting, so I picked it up, NARC. Great M, shooting game, should be fun. Anything else I picked up from fucking Chief? Oh yeah, I picked up Astro Boy. Came in, it's an early, it's a later PS2 game because it has no memory card and has that weird fucking thing of it here for five bucks. Of course, it's bundled game, so it got cheaper. And I don't expect this to be a good game, because I believe that this is off the shitty movie that came out very, uh, not off the original. I don't expect that shitty CGI movie, which I'm pretty sure wasn't good, so. I'm not expecting good things out of you, boy. Next, we got Kendo, Master of the Bushido Samurai game. Looks fun. Fucking Samurai fighting game. Tell it's early because it's either funny day on it, it's blue. Because early PS2 games are blue. So, plus, also like the weird how like, the amateur rating on it is on there because it has like little weird stuff like that. While the ones nowadays just like like that. Perfect. And then fucking another thing I picked up from Chief was an NBA Jam for PlayStation 2. Because, you know, fuck it, an NBA Jam, why not? Go see how it evolved over the years from this one, the original arcade, to the 
Super Nintendo version to the Wii version. And essentially, NBA Playgrounds, which is pretty much a spiritual successor to NBA Jam, running old basketball games. Next up, we got Shinobi, made by Sega, on the PlayStation 2. Another early, early PlayStation 2 game, but not too early, because, you know, I only got the Started going with the clear discs on the back, but still early because of the way the mature rating is still written weird on there. I find the date on here, like the year. I don't know. I'm gonna say that's like like 2003, because I know 2001 to 2 they were doing those blue discs on there. Another thing I got, because the fucking cover looked cool as shit, was Unreal Tournament for PlayStation 2. Just a game though, so yeah, whatever. Don't really need some manuals for it. Even though it would be nice to have them play, but I'm not really picky. I just buy games to buy them. The uh, next thing I picked up because it looked interesting was uh, Future Tactics The Uprising for PlayStation 2. Has everything in there, and once again, it's one of those early on PlayStation 2 games. Cause, uh, yes. You can play up to one or two players on this. Plus, it looks like a fun little interesting war game. So I was like, sure, give it a try. Then, a game I know that would be fun is uh, I Ninja, made by Namco from PlayStation 2. I know, they re I know they released on GameCube and the original Xbox back in the day. Yeah, it's like a little fun ninja game. You run around, slice and dice things up, and. Itch! Looking good. Yeah, in case the BX doesn't want to close properly, it hates me. Fuck. And then I only picked this one up. Uh, Barbie Software Horse Adventures Wild Horse Rescue. I only picked this up because I think our friend uh, Captain Psychopath streamed this. Yeah, Captain Psychopath. He streamed this for like an hour or two or this or fucking some other Barbie game. I don't know. I just went back, hey, look, dude, I found your favorite game. He's like, no, that's terrible. I don't like that game, it sucks. And I saw all this at Chief's table for like the entire weekend. I'm just like, fuck it, I'll bite on it. Uh, nice clean box of Street Fighter 2 for Super Nintendo. Pretty, uh, pretty nice condition, I would say. A little worn on the sides there, but overall, fuck it, it looks. The front cover off looks beautiful along with the back. It's like very pristine and clean, so that's pretty good. Good fan of the good fan of what Chief brings to Retro Pluses. Try to give him my money as much as I can so I can bring more shit like this. That's fucking cool. Good seller all around. And then, like he said, like we won the Spanish bingo, I picked up pretty much my things on this. Uno attack. Brand new in the box. Yeah, boy! But so apparently this also has like five new cards on the back. Uh, this, this card, all card, trade hands, hit two, hit fire, hit all. Which discard all. Play all your cards that, that match the color in the discard pile. Okay. Trade hands, which get out for training with player. Train yours with another player's. Not sure if you can pick. Hit two, hit the Uno attack button twice. But I hope it doesn't go off. It doesn't go off. Hit fire. Uh oh, you have to hit the Uno attack button until it fires. <sighs> that sucks. Hit all. Each player takes a turn to hit the Uno attack button. So yeah, it's just a, pretty much an Uno game which you put in there after you play it down and then you just got it. <laughs> shoots back at you. I'm pretty sure you have to fucking use all the cards when you Frenzy's an unpredictable version of a popular Uno game. You'll never know what happens, but sooner or later it'll happen to you. Uno attack, add speed and surprise to the classic Uno card game. Push the button on the card launcher. If you're lucky, nothing will happen, but if not, you'll fire a stream of Uno card attacks or Uno attack cards. Now, I don't think, yeah, maybe it fucking says in a manual there, but I'm not sure if you like, if it fires back at you, like how much, like if you have to play all those cards or not, because yeah, you know how fun that would be. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Play, play with Mario and shit down cards just fire at. I must be a fuck, I'm done with this game. I'm really upset. 
then, because street games were fun, I picked up Street Hoops, even though it's probably not going to be as good as the NBA Street Series, but yeah, fuck it, Street, street Hoops, you want to give it a try, looks fun. Nice. And then at Damien's ta Damien's table, I picked up this Super Mario Odyssey book, which I'm pretty sure it's like a giant strategy guide. Which is probably would have been nice to have when I was 100 percent in the game. <laughs> nah, maybe we need it. So yeah, Mario Odyssey. Um table of contents. Oh yeah, it's pretty much it's pretty much a guide. A little nice guide. Tells you how to beat a boss, how to do stuff. Okay, even tells you like the map of all the stuff, which is nice. Uh, that were all the purple coins, though. Oh, oh yeah. It's what it's fucking helpful to have. It's like, oh, yeah, fucking do it on your own. Fuck you. It was very rewarding, but it was very long and tedious to do. I did it. 100%. It then, like, the first week, because I fucking fell in love with the game and binged it, like, 12 to 14 hours when I first bought it, picked it up, because it worked somehow when I didn't ask it off. I was like, whatever, I'll take it. I'll fucking play the shit off Mario Odyssey. Very, very good game. I recommend buying it if you don't already have it for Switch. It's literally one of the best modern Mario games that they've released in years. The next thing I picked up was Samurai Warriors 2. Another fighting game. It kind of reminds me of like Dynasty Warriors a little bit. Look at how fun it looks. Completing everything. So that was a regular Samurai Warriors 2, and this was Samurai Warriors 2 Empire. I picked up. And then, to keep the trend of 2 going, you got Dynasty Warriors 2. In there, I guess. I'm not gonna pull it out. Yeah, another Koei Tecmo game. Pretty much, I can just hack and slash a shit ton of enemies and just kill them all. And then, another 2 game, I got Klonoa 2. Lunati's Vile, I guess. You know, in there, Clone 2, got Clone 1 for fucking Wii, so I was like, eh, pick this one up. Pretty sure this is another one I got from Scott. Then, Nintendo GameCube. Bex would fucking yell at me, but I got Shonen Jump's One Piece Pirates Carnival. Mm. Only, only because they used the bad four kids dubbed actors for this game. Mm. <laughs> it's nice. I had fun with it when I played it at fucking uh, the free play for the first Dallas. And then, I know for a fact I got these at Scott's table. I got Pack Infection. And Pack Infection. I don't know what this is. It might probably be like a weird RPG sort of thing. But the uh, good thing about this is that it not only does have the game right there, but it also has like a DVD. Like a Bonus 45 minute anime DVD. Oh, that's cool. I like anime games. And then we got Tudoken 3 for PlayStation 2. Because, you know, I know this is an interesting RPG series. It looks interesting. Kind of reminds me of uh, Dragon Quest and like how the characters are drawn, but not really. Sort of have, have a weird similarity, but I know Kiri Toriyama didn't make it. It's made by Konami, though. So, that's see. cool. like it. From a distance, kind of like some of it could. Never mind, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah that was, you know, it's not. It's not right Mariana, but it's a similar style. Like, it has like influence by it. That's the, the best way to put it. It's like, it has a little bit of an influence if you look at it. Fucking reminds me of Har from uh, Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn of Fire Emblem. Enough of that. He writes a cool ass dragon. And where's my patch like that? He's a badass pirate, I guess you could say. And fucking. Oh, yeah. Also, the cup. I showed off. Mm -hmm. the cup's cool. And then, if you didn't notice, we were using this in the backdrop. It's the Retropalooza 6 poster. They have like some of they have like quite a bit of these. It says here is the September 30th, 30th Arlington Convention Center. Buy, sell, and trade. Retro and modern video games, which they had plenty of, mm -hmm. as you can see here. The modern the modern games though aren't like the widest variety. They're not like you're not gonna find a 2018 game there like I didn't see Spider-Man. 
They're gonna see the used. However, we did see uh, my first time in Retropalooza history. It's like they had like a little kiosk they had a play PlayStation. Yeah. It wasn't just one. They had like three of them because one was that Spider-Man, of course. The other one had the new God of War, and the other one had Street Fighter Five on it, just for a free play. Like those had to have been officially set up by a PlayStation. Yeah, because they had like the PlayStation thing and all. I wish we took a picture of it. But of course, then they had like the free play stuff in the other corner. But yeah, because you saw what they had from. Fuck it. She has four stuff that he bought. All the way down to like, you know, Genesis, DS, Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, and just everything in between, even the fucking Atari. There's plenty of Atari stuff there, and like, a like controller you got. Plenty of stuff. It was fucking great. Free games to play, tournaments, guest panels, prizes, raffles, and more. And they had plenty of raffles. They had like the NES table that Jay made. Controller that was made that was up for a raffle. The usual poster signed by all the guests was up for a raffle. Then, yeah, just got the poster, got the table. Fuck, what else was fucking up for grabs? Forgot. It was like one other big thing. I thought it was just the poster and the table. I thought there was like another thing there because they had like three raffles going, but I don't know. Oh, yeah, the other raffle was like. This Game Chasers bundle where you got a Game Chasers shirt and season 1, 2, 3, and 4. Oh. All the other bundles. Yeah, pretty nice. Yeah, it was cool. Because, you know, Jay's the big one. Uh, he's the host of it, so everybody knows him. Yeah. See special guests. The Angry Ville Game Nerd. Boogie 298. Norm the Gaming Historian. Mr. Creeper Pasta. Gerard the Completionist. Black Nerd Comedy. Pat the NES Monk. The 8-Bit Guy. Tafita Darling. Tafita Darling. Gaijin Goomba. Chad Tronic. Galaxy and D's Nuts. Arlo, Ant Dude, Stina, Stina Glitters, it's a cosplayer, or she's pretty. <laughs> Alex Ficiani, Pixel Dan, Wood Hawker, Ransom, Game Chasers, Comic Drake, very cool dude. I wish he would have got more love. It's fucking one of these, one of those Houston's mm -hmm. who's like, oh, look through my panel, there's nobody in this fucking room. It's like, oh. Yeah, he's not, he's, he's pretty cool. Dreamcast guy, A Dick Eric, Scott Squatch, OK Chief, Gaijin Gooba's wife, Petite Pika, and Jordan Grinch. 12, kids 12 and under are getting for free, so if you got family, there you go. Come join the fun and relive the past at uh, DFW's biggest retro gaming celebration. You can now pre your tickets at retropalooza.com. This video is sponsored by Lunch Games Guru. Insomnia Games and Games81.com or I don't know what the fuck that part was. Did you actually? You didn't get through everything yet, though. No, not yet. I'm just fucking. So I shot this poster. Mm. <laughs> I forgot what the fucking Newfie manga says of that. Games81.com. No. What the fuck was it, that bitch? Hey everyone, the manga's back with another video brought to you by Game81.com. Fuck Game81.com. And then, fucking. I got Jordan's favorite thing. Jordan's favorite stuff. At the convention. <laughs> <laughs> this one I picked up at his favorite table booth. Run by his favorite man. Aaron Kucharski. I actually have that one, I think, as well. Hot news, N64. The N64 disguised as the N64. Hot tips. Cool cheats and sneak peeks. Toys R Us has the Will Rare logo down there because this game was showing off. As you can see, Donkey Kong 64 and Jet Force Gemini. Two rare games which are very, very good. I'm gonna make sure it was there. It has a little nice cover there. And that's why those weird little orange knobs there, which are bizarre, pretty cool. As you can see, it's not big of a tape, but fucking it. It's cool to have on the shelf. Yeah. This is like one of the few VH tape, VHS tapes Jordan wouldn't mind putting on a shelf and displaying it because, you know, it's yeah. 64, it's video games. He's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's pretty yeah. nice. Okay. And I got the Rin Stippy Show because, you know, it's classic Nickelodeon. With that classic Nickelodeon orange tape. It has 40 minutes, 40 minutes, and it has like four little shorts on it. On duty with. Be in the Army, Fire Dogs music video, In the Army again, or In the Army's two little things, and Royal Canadian Kilted Yaxman. So yeah, Red Stippy is a 
It was a weird, bizarre show that would never be allowed to air on a kid's thing like Nickelodeon nowadays. And another kid's show that I got stuff on was Pokemon, the original anime. Jiggly Pop, Jiggly Puff Pop, and Thunder Shock. Play this one, this is where he goes against Lieutenant Surge. Right there with his Raichu. And then, I don't know where this one takes place, fuck it, there's Paris, and Paris on the back there, and Charmander, Pikachu and bow ties. These are only have like three episodes on it each, so that's cool. I like collecting VHS tapes. As you, uh, if you've seen the, the vlogs, you will definitely know that. And another one I picked up was Sailor Moon, The Legend Begins, which I'm pretty sure these are just like the first couple episodes. Well, I, but what I think is really fucking interesting about this one, look at that. It fucking comes on a, it's a white tape. This looks fucking like, unique. It's bizarre, because everything else is usually black, Nickelodeon is usually orange, because of course it is, but fucking this. It's white. It fucking looks pretty cool, I'd say. Fucking love it. And then, fucking, I didn't even know they released something like this, but they got a Tekken movie. You know, Tekken uh, motion picture. Featuring music from The Offspring, Creation of Comforty, Soul Heart, Stabbing Western, and The Urge. It's very like, it's recent, it says 9798, Snamco. So I'm gonna assume it's like about an hour or so long. Yeah, Tekken. Also comes in a white case, or white, white tape. Very fucking cool. Real game stuff, anime stuff like this, so it's like, worth giving a shot. Especially if you're a big Tekken fan of the characters, you'd be like, hey, I know that character, that's him, well, that's that. Then, anime stuff that Jordan also wouldn't mind showing off, putting on a shelf. Dragon Ball Z movies. You got the Dead Zone movie with fucking uh, Garlic Jr. You got the, the movie Tree of Might starring Turles, the fucking insane warrior that drains the planet for energy and then fights into a fruit. And then, I believe this is the first one, too, this or down no, no, this is the first one. The World's Strongest, where he fights against like this. Uh, North one. Oh, that's the no, that's not strongest. So yeah. That's where you fight against Dr. Dr. Wheelow. Dr. Wheelow. The fucking... They just watch Revenge on Goku. For destroying the Red Ribbon Army, I believe. That's the plot of that one. I don't really know much, because those are like the movies I watched the least. But they're pretty good, I'd say. And then, we just got a regular episode. It's the fusion, eternal struggle, where Vegeta and Goku fuse together turn into Vegito and just beat the shit out of them. That's a, but this is the where they actually get sucked in. Thing and Supreme Kai and the Elder Kai pretty much think everything's lost, but they actually like put a barrier around them to get absorbed so they can take out Piccolo, Goten, Trunks, and then they soon find fucking Majin Buu in there and try pulling him out. And this pretty sure this episode stops like right before he transforms into Kid Buu and blows up the Earth. So very intense shit. <laughs> and then. <laughs> like a Donkey Kong Country, the legend of the Crystal Coconut. Which this isn't even a movie, it's just fucking random episodes just slapped together and just call it a movie. I don't know why. The only disappointing thing, for me at least, is they have missed the opportunity to make this yellow. They missed the tape to be yellow. Come on now. You had a perfect tape. That cost more money. Care fucking Donkey Kong Country. They made no money. It's a bad show. It's a but shitty it's, show. It's it's probably so, didn't make no fucking money. It's so fucking funny though. It's like the animations are bad. It looks questionably bad, and I don't know why you would want this. Man, one of my biggest finds I got there. I got cords for an N64. Now, which one you may ask? The gold one. The Toys R Us exclusive one that they, well, because I saw this out of Houston, it was a complete box for like 250 or something. So I paid a fraction of that price for this. Just ran me sitting now, I was like, how much this? He tells me the price, I whip it out, and, he, and the guy was just shooting himself, he's like, wait, are you serious? And I just bought money, pulled it toys, I'm like, uh, are you gonna take it? Hurries up, scurries over, tries to like, give me my shit, it's like, okay. So yeah. I now have six colored N64 variants. Found another one there with like a, 
like a crystal red, but fucking they're asking too much. So I was like, pass. So there's that. Then lastly, but not least, there's this ROM hat. There's this ROM table that we always go by every single year. It's where Jordan, you know, Jordan and I usually get her some stuff. It's where we got like that. I know we got, I got a few Super Metroid hacks for him there. We got Pocket and Rocky you. One and two combined there once. Lots of other stuff that I can't think of off the top of my head. Well, when I'm browsing through it, I found <laughs> this Waluigi's Taco Stand, which is basically they take like the aesthetics and controls from Mario 64, but they replace it with Waluigi. And his thing is, from what I saw, like the first couple minutes of gameplay, I saw this. He was playing at a casino, lost all his money there, and had to make, and now he has to work to get his money back. So he runs a taco stand. The premise of this game is, is you're supposed to go around this little island and just collect fucking taco ingredients, drop back down to your stand, make it, and just rinse and repeat. I'm not sure if there's like more levels to it or whatnot. No nuts. Let's play the game. Let's play it. Let's play the game. No motherfucking nuts. Because I'm the most popular YouTuber just because I like Of North it. Dakota? <laughs> Jeff, this is what, this is what, how it works, fucking. You take your 64. And you can just insert it in there like that, and then you can just pop your game on top, and it's a thing, and there you go. It's only twenty dollars. I was gonna get it, but I didn't have enough games to justify getting it. It's a weird Frankenstein little thing, but since I have that Japanese Mario Party 2, which technically can play English as well, other games are like Japanese and European exclusive for pals. So I was like, eh, okay, I'll pick it up. Because he was thinking about it, he's like, nah, I'm not getting out. So then I was like. No, give me that, actually. Okay. This is the worst now I got one and two Japanese. I can get some Japanese and Shore games that are my favorite. Just play them like that. Very good finds, I would say so. How's that everything on your end? By the looks of it, yeah, that is everything. Got quite a bit of stuff. Just a serrated assortment of stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going through my stuff down here. I just laid it out and took pictures for Snapchat. And yeah, um, yeah. I'm going to Snapchat Pat. I'm just going to send a Snapchat back. And then there's Patrick. Shit. <laughs> just dysfunctional. Let me show the viewers what we're talking about. Fucking. So there's Jordan on the ground. Look how nice this pile is. Fucking sitting there being a bitch. And then we just have my disorganized fuck of a mess over here. She's like, yeah, I'm just gonna throw it around. It's where it sums up us. It's like, he's neat and organized there. Mine's just like, yeah, there's just a big clutter of fuck there. Pretty much. Yeah. But here's a close up of the poster if you wanted to see what it looked like. You can pause the video and look at that. Meyer and its glory. It's a cool poster they gave out for free, so I was like, yes, one for Jordan and I. Also, fucking, before we go. I was missing the Retropalooza Houston weekend for the first one. We told them to, if they had extras, and they did. Then we got two of these. Okay, Retropalooza Houston. So now I have all of them. I just got to get another one of these because I just put it in my Dallas 18, 2018 one. So I just got to get like a piece of string like this, a little card reader like that, or a clear case. And I'll be officially set up with all the fucking passes that I have over the years. See how much I can make. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's pretty much everything going through all. And we would. One more quick thing. Um, Beck would so have had his. Do what? Oh, yeah, Beck would have had his, but he did feel like making a video, so, you yeah, know, he took off for it. I'm pretty sure we remember, because, you know. He's not on the channel over the whole lot, though, anyway, so maybe. Yeah. Which, so I, he, which yes, I could have gotten away with letting, or getting Ben not to do his whole video, which I, I didn't want to make him do. But he also got a lot of fucking shit. And a lot of good shit. Yeah. So. Because we're right. trying, trying to remember, like, off the top of our heads. Because, you know, we got the, he got the Wii Sports Resorts. He got fucking... Let's get back in here. So he got a fucking Wii Sports Resort. He got Twilight Princess, both for the GameCube and Wii U HD. He got Wind Waker HD. Wind Waker HD, he got that. Picked up Fortune Street because like fuck a yes, fucking I orgasmically clean copy. It's very Fortune clean, Street. just pretty much clean his mind. He also picked up, I believe, Pokemon Ultra Sun Sealed. Yep, yep. He also got Professor Layton. Game. Professor Layton, because Catherine, his girlfriend, really likes those stuff. 
then I want to say there's more. Okay, right, got Animal Crossing complete with like that nice fucking like I even had the Animal Crossing memory card, which I'm like that fuck because I was like oh. If I had to be jealous of one thing, it was that memory card that was in there. I was like, mmm. Because it literally has, like, the Animal Crossing green, screen. It has a character on it. Looks pretty good. You also got Resident Evil 4 for the GameCube. In case it's a little beat up, but he was fine with it. It was completed and all that. Yep. So, badass. And he also got, like, this little, like, pixelated, like, art of, like, the Metroid from... Those pixel art, you know. Yeah, those little, like, of the, like, the actual Metroid flying around. Yeah. Now we get to pack this shit up in our bags and go home. See y'all later. I believe that was everything for fucking Beck. Yeah, he didn't get a home. He didn't get too much shit. Got plenty of stuff, though. It was cool. Yeah. So that is the end of everything. So I hope you enjoy this pretty see, boring. We'll see y'all next season for the vlogs or whatever the hell. I don't know how this is being edited, but we'll see y'all. Uh, we might if we don't vlog tomorrow, that is. Yeah. It's cold in here. I'm gonna go downstairs and warm up and chit chat with Mark. And yeah. Shit and, and then we'll pack up later when we chill a little bit. So I hope you enjoy this video. Be sure to give it a like, comment down we'll below, come back and see what. you later with something new. More rule. Fuck off. All right. So cool. Comment down and see which like which one of these finds you thought were the most impressive or quite enjoyed seeing, and tell us what game aim we should probably look out for. If we don't already have it at the next Rush Blueza. So until then, we will uh, see you later, and I hope you have a ye old gay time later. Oh my boy. Bigger